Hey everyone, it's Justin again. In this lesson, we're going to be exploring trapezoids. This is a type of quadrilateral that we have not seen yet, and it is not a type of parallelogram. So it's going to create a whole new category for us. By the end of this lesson, you will be able to classify trapezoids and isosceles trapezoids by their properties. First, we'll learn the properties and parts of a trapezoid. Next, we'll learn the properties of an isosceles trapezoid. Finally, we'll complete one practice problem. Before we can do anything with trapezoids, we have to know what they are. A trapezoid is a quadrilateral with exactly one pair of parallel sides. So that means that trapezoids look something like this. They still have four sides, but they're different from all of the other quadrilaterals that we've looked at so far, in that only one pair of their sides are parallel. These two sides would be my parallel ones in this case. Trapezoids do also have parts with specific names. The two parallel sides are called bases. That means that these two sides would each be considered a base. The two sides that are not parallel are called legs. So these would be the legs in this particular trapezoid. You may remember that we've also used the term leg before in right triangles. Leg means something a little different in each of these contexts, so make sure that whenever you see it, you carefully consider the full context before you jump to any conclusions. Now, what properties do trapezoids have? Well, we know that one pair of opposite sides are parallel from the definition. And because these sides are parallel, we learned way back in our parallel and perpendicular lines unit that the consecutive angles between them are supplementary. This is from the consecutive interior angle theorem. Remember, you can always come back to this visual and extend your lines to help you see what the consecutive interior angles are. The exact same thing happens over here with these angles being supplementary. I'll leave the visualization of this one to you. We can word this by saying that consecutive angles on different bases are supplementary, but there's really no perfect way to word this. If you have a better way to write this that makes more sense to you, feel free to reword it or add additional information in your notes. In order to prove that a quadrilateral is a trapezoid, this is ultimately what we need to show. You can consider having one and only one pair of opposite sides that is parallel to be your trapezoid test. That's actually all there is to it for trapezoids. If you're feeling a bit let down, don't worry. There is a special type of trapezoid with some additional properties. That would be the isosceles trapezoid. Before I show it to you, use your prior knowledge to make a prediction. What do you think it means for a trapezoid to be isosceles? Hopefully you remember the word isosceles from triangles and recognize that this means an isosceles trapezoid is one that has two congruent sides. Specifically, the legs will be congruent. Isosceles trapezoids look like this. So if these are my parallel bases, then here are my congruent legs. Just like an isosceles triangle, having congruent legs also creates some angle relationships. Both pairs of base angles are congruent. That means that these angles are congruent to each other, and these angles are congruent to each other. It also means that the opposite interior angles are supplementary. You can show why this is true by using the substitution property of equality, but I'll leave that for you to take on as a challenge opportunity. Lastly, the diagonals are congruent. In order to show that a quadrilateral is an isosceles trapezoid, you first have to know that it's a trapezoid at all. That means you need to know that only one pair of your opposite sides are parallel. Once you know this, then you can combine it with any one of these properties of isosceles trapezoids. For example, if I have a trapezoid with congruent diagonals, then I know it must be an isosceles trapezoid. Or if I have a trapezoid with a congruent pair of base angles, and so on and so on. Our practice problem is probably starting to look very familiar to you. This time we're asked to determine the best description for LARP, trapezoid, isosceles trapezoid, or not a trapezoid. 
based on each set of information. That means you do not have to worry about other types of quadrilaterals for this. We have three sets of information, but let's look at them one at a time. Set A says that LA is parallel to PR, LP is perpendicular to PR, LP is not parallel to AR, as the measure of angle A is 72 degrees. Pause the video here to mark these relationships in your picture. On your picture, you should have added arrows to show the parallel sides and a right angle to show the perpendicular ones. You could also add in the measure of angle A. When dealing with properties, it's helpful to write them out so we can compare them to our notes. So I'm going to note here that I have only one pair of parallel opposite sides, since my top and bottom are parallel, and I know the left and right sides are not. Since I know that only one pair of opposite sides is parallel, then this is definitely a trapezoid. The only question now is whether it's just a trapezoid or if it's an isosceles trapezoid. Hmm. Do any of the properties of trapezoids or isosceles trapezoids involve perpendicular segments? No, they don't. However, there are several properties that involve angle measures and relationships, so we should be using the fact that angle P is 90 degrees. I have the measurements of angles P and A. These are opposite angles. Take a look back at your properties. What do I know about the opposite angles in a trapezoid or an isosceles trapezoid? The opposite angles in an isosceles trapezoid are supplementary. We can use this to check if LARP is isosceles here. Are angles A and P supplementary? No, they add up to 162 degrees, not 180. So since the opposite angles are not supplementary, this trapezoid is not isosceles. That means it's just a plain old trapezoid. Let's take a look at set B next. Set B says the measure of angle P is 100 degrees, the measure of angle R is 80 degrees, and the measure of angle A is 80 degrees as well. There's not much to mark here, but I could fill in my angle measurements. What you should be doing is using these angle measurements to check which sides, if any, are parallel, and whether or not this could be isosceles. Pause the video here to check these. Angles P and R are supplementary, since their measures add to 180. That means that LP is parallel to AR. This is because of the consecutive interior angle theorem converse back from our parallel lines unit. For this to be a trapezoid, only one pair of sides can be parallel. So what about LA and PR? Are those sides parallel too? No, they are not parallel. Angles A and R would be the consecutive interior angles between LA and PR. They are not supplementary because they only add up to 160 degrees. We can summarize this as only one pair of sides are parallel. Now the only question is just, is this a trapezoid or is it an isosceles trapezoid? What do you think? Angles R and A are a pair of base angles since they're both on one of our parallel sides. And they're congruent. Since we have a pair of congruent base angles, this means that LARP is an isosceles trapezoid. Now, did it seem confusing to you that these two lines are parallel in this problem, given that they really don't look parallel? This is a great reminder that pictures and diagrams are not always to scale in math. It's important to rely on your properties and knowledge instead of just your eyes and how a picture looks. If having a picture that's clearly out of scale makes it hard for you to conceptualize things, you can always redraw it for yourself as you determine more information. Now, let's see how we do with set C. Set C says LA is parallel to PR. The measure of angle A is 112 degrees, and the measure of angle L is 68 degrees. Pause the video now and try this one on your own. The first thing I did was fill in information on my picture. So I marked LA and PR as parallel and added in my angle measures. Since I already have one pair of parallel sides, the next thing I want to check is whether the other pair of sides are parallel. And again, 
I only have angle measurements to work with to figure that out. Angles L and A are consecutive interior angles between LP and AR. They are also supplementary, since 112 and 68 have a sum of 180. Uh-oh. That means LP and AR are parallel. And that means that both pairs of opposite sides in LARP are parallel, so it is not a trapezoid. Let's look back at our final answers. Set A was a trapezoid because it had only one pair of opposite sides parallel and the opposite angles were not supplementary. Set B was an isosceles trapezoid because it had only one pair of opposite sides parallel and the base angles were congruent. Lastly, set C was not a trapezoid at all because it had both pairs of opposite sides parallel. Now you can classify trapezoids by their properties. Always make sure that you're checking how many pairs of sides are parallel. After all, having only one pair of parallel sides is what separates trapezoids from parallelograms. See you next time. Hey.